Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, today is Friday. Praise God. And I tell you this every Friday, as much as I can remember. Take the weekend to listen to this message from Monday to Friday. We've got lots of messages, lots of materials that can bless you. Take time. See, keep the word of God always before your eyes. Read it, listen to it, see it. It's so important. It's so important. Because these are all the things that put you in the right light. Praise God. Listen, as you do that this weekend, you are going to be elevated to a new walk and level with God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? And I always tell told you, Friday's demand is till Monday. What will last you from Friday, Saturday, Sunday? So I want you to release your faith for that grace. Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread and all that I need to sustain me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, listen, we were praying some two days ago, three days ago, we we're praying. And the word of the Lord came to us and he said, you're going to go through a hard time in your nation. And he, he said, this is beyond politics. It doesn't matter who comes in as the, the president of your country. Now also, let me tell you, this God is working on that. And you will soon see the hand of the Lord. Praise God. But then, the Lord was telling us that we're going to go through a hard phase. Things are really going to become difficult for a lot of people. And so the Lord says, look, ask me. He says, tell my people to ask me now for the grace of comfort for that face. I'm sharing this with you now so that you would do the same thing. Ask the Lord for grace of comfort to walk through that season. Now, that season is going to come. It will surely come. It's for a period. But it doesn't mean as a child of God, you will suffer in that season. Now, this is one truth about prophecy and God speaking to you. The moment God shows you a thing, the activation, act, the, the, he has, by his word, he has activated, activated a covenant of exemption. If God tells you an evil is going to happen, by that information, you have been exempted, except you are foolish. If God comes to tell you that people are going to die, if you become one of those that die, you died because of your foolishness, not because it was the fulfillment of that prophecy. As long as you hear the voice of God, a covenant of exemption has been activated in you. And all you need to do is walk by obedience to the Lord and you'll be exempted. God came to know, I said, the end of all flesh has come with the exemption of your flesh and those that are closest to you. You see that now? Everything God, every time God has shown up and gives a warning to his people, it is because he wants to exempt them from that challenge. You remember even Moses when he went to Egypt. Every plague that came into Egypt, they were exempted in Goshen. See that now? So when God is telling you there is a season of hardship that is coming, he is not telling you to start saying, oh God, mm -hmm. hey, what do we do? No, 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 no. You yourself, Embrace that covenant of exemption and say, Lord, thank you for your word. So what would you have us do? See that now? Pharaoh had a dream in Egypt. 
that there's going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Guess what? When the seven years of famine came, Pharaoh was exempted. And Pharaoh actually became the richest king in the world then because he was the only one selling grain to the whole world. The whole world went to Egypt for food. Covenant of exemption. This is why we pray. This is why we fellowship with God so that he would tell us things. When we hear him, the covenant of exemption has been activated. Praise God. So now I'm telling you the instruction the Lord gave. Take time and pray and ask the Lord for the grace of comfort. Take note of this prayer point. Ask the Lord for the grace of comfort for this next phase. And, and, and the Lord now, whether it's going to come on the world, but the Lord specifically was talking to me about Nigeria. Praise God. There is the hardship that is going to come on Nigeria. It's for a season. Now, because God is going to step in, and this is why God wants to step in. He's going to step in where the leadership of Nigeria is concerned. He's going to step in. You will know when he steps in. You will know. Forget all this drama you're seeing going on. The Lord is going to step in. But then even when he steps in, this one will happen. See that now? But for you as a child of God, God wants to exempt you. The covenant is already active. You become a partaker of it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I was sharing with you about Jesus being the light. He says, I am the light of the world. Let this sink in you. Take Jesus out. The world is in darkness. Now, guess what? There is so much darkness in the world indeed. Now, that's why in Isaiah he says, Behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you. Take note, he didn't say the Lord shall arise upon the world. He said the Lord shall arise upon you. In the midst of the darkness that is all around the world, only those who follow Jesus will walk in the light. Not just walk in the light, they will receive from him the light of life. So God never said he was going to take away the darkness in the world. No, but rather Jesus in the midst of that darkness will be shining his lights. And those who follow Jesus will receive the light of life from him. And they will begin to walk and continue to walk in the light, even in the midst of the dark world. So when you hear people complain, oh, things are so terrible. People are so wicked. Can you imagine someone just walked into a mall and started shooting people without any provocation? Can you imagine? Hey! That's all in the darkness. But let me tell you this. Those who walk with the light of life, they will wake up in the morning and they want to go to such malls. And they will hear a voice tell them, don't go there. Or a call will come in and say, oh, you are needed in such and so place. Um, you know what? Because the decision is always yours. You know what? I think I should go to this new place and, and I'll do this mall thing later. Why? Because you have the light of life. Where destruction is taking place, you will never be found there. Why? Because you have the light of life. You see that? Huh? Jesus promised if you will walk with him, if you will follow him, this is what he's going to give you. He's going to give you the light of life. That's his intention. That's God's intention. See, you should never be caught in a disaster. You should never. You should ne never. You should not be in a vehicle. And the vehicle have accident. Everybody dies. No, not you. Not you. Not you. I, I pray, thank you, Holy Spirit, that the Lord will open your understanding not just hear it now, but that you truly take these words seriously and begin to act on them. It is good for your life. 
There is so much darkness around. There is so much darkness in the world. I told you on Monday, people have learned how to master darkness. But brothers and sisters, we are not called to master darkness. We are called to rule over darkness. How do we rule over darkness? He's giving us the light of life. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ and you are watching me right now, or you've been toying around with your faith, this is one time that you must set that line and say, you know what? It's time for me to begin to walk in the light and no longer in darkness. How many people are struggling financially because they are in darkness? They try to make ways in the darkness. Meanwhile, in the light, God has made everything that you need to live a good life. Brothers and sisters, Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. Not just have life, that they might have it in abundance. That's what Jesus promised us. Has he come? Yes, he has come. Has he given us the life? Yes, he has. He gave his life that we may live. What kind of life? Abundant. Now think about it. The Amplified Version says, it's a good life till it's, till it's full, till it overflows. It's not just you having enough, even where provision is concerned. It's you having more than enough to take care of every other person around you. Remember last month we talked about being Abraham's seed and the blessing God promised Abraham. That through him all the families of the earth will be blessed. That's God's intention. That's God's desire. That should be your desire. And hey, he's building us up. He's building us up. He says, when the Lord have finished building Zion, he will appear in his glory. And guess what? The Lord said this month, it is time. Believe God today. Put away the darkness. Turn your attention from those things that are of the darkness. Can you embrace him? Follow him so that you will receive his light. He will lead you in the path of light. He will show you. Sometimes the doctor may say there's sickness in your body. But what is the true light show? See that now? I remember when my wife was to give birth to her first daughter. And we had agreed, having prayed, and God gave me the knowledge that this, it's going to be by CS. And then so we, we went there. And while I was praying, I heard the Lord say to me, He says, my angels will be in that theater. I said, thank you, sir. And the doctor was telling me later that when they opened up my wife and they were about to cut the womb, they realized the womb was not sitting properly. And so, and then the doctor said, you know, sometimes when you hear people bleed, bled to death during CS surgery, you know, um, during CS, that's the cause of things like that that happens. But then he knew enough to start praying in the spirit because he was born again. He began to pray in the spirit. Now, while he was praying in the spirit, he heard the Lord say to him, cut here. Now, what happened? Light came. This is one of the benefits of praying in the Spirit. This is one of the benefits of praying in tongues. When we pray in tongues, we're not just making noise. We are tapping from His light. So the doctor shared this with me. Now, this is a doctor, professional doctor, praise God, a good one at that. You know, he shared this with me. He said he knew he had to begin to pray in the Spirit. And while he was praying in the Spirit, he heard the voice of God say, cut here. So he caught, and the moment he caught the womb, relaxed, and it was actually the right place he caught. Praise God. That was light. In their normal light, oh, most likely they were bound to make a mistake. So he switched to the other light that shows things clearly. And from that light, the voice of God came. Because the light in him 
It's not the light we see with our optical eyes. It's the light we hear from the voice of God. God speaks to us. So when I say look at things, look at something through his light, I'm saying to you, open your heart to hear his voice concerning that matter. Let this affect every judgment of yours. So the doctors may have checked your body and they say so, so and so thing is wrong with you. Before you take that decision, before you take that judgment, before you condemn yourself to death or whatever situation of life, take that matter over to him. Say, Lord, this is what the light in this situation is showing me. Well, Lord, I want to view this under your light. Now, you already know sickness is not part of what he gives to us. You already know that when you bring sickness under his light, it will not be found. Oh, that's the truth. When you bring sickness under his light, you won't see it. You won't see it. You don't see such things under his light. That's why you must learn. If I don't see it under his light, but they are seeing it under this light. So what do I do? Then you begin to learn how to operate from his light, which eventually, I command of Renea, his light will correct this light because his light is true. This light is not clear. This is the truth. And I pray God gives us grace next week. I'm going to start sharing with you practically how to walk in his light where things like this is concerned. It will bless you so much. Praise God. My time is up. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I pray for you that a joy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see someone, you've been so moody for weeks. And... You actually believe that you're depressed. Yeah. You believe it, that you're depressed. Because several people have mentioned that these are the symptoms of depression. And so you've even come to that place where you're like, I think I'm depressed. And you just, you're just there. I pray now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you would just as much as lift up your hands right now, just, just, just raise it up like this. Father, Restore joy in this one right now. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fill her heart with joy now. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I also see someone, you, you've had, um, there's, there's, there's some pain around your pelvic region now you've suffered that pain for so long you've been to the doctor and they told you something is wrong thank you lord jesus i told you when you look under his light you won't see it so right now i'm praying for you thank you jesus i curse that thing because it is not true i curse that thing right now and I command it to vanish from your body. And let your life, let your body reflect what the true light is showing right now. Be healed. And let that pain cease from today. Now, pain, go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone that has one sickness or the other, I pray for you right now. Be healed. Be healed healed in jesus name amen praise god god bless you have the best weekend ever i'll see you on monday bye